Good afternoon. I'm Kevin Walker with the Overland Park Chamber of Commerce. I'm conducting this candidate forum with Chad Philhauer, who is a candidate for USD 232 School Board. Uh, Chad, thanks for taking some time to join us today. Of course. Thank you. I appreciate it. And before we get into our questions, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in running for the school board? Well, hello, Kevin. Thank you for putting this interview together. My name is Chad Fillauer, and I'm running for DeSoto School Board Position 1. I've been happily married to my beautiful wife for over 13 years. We have four incredible daughters and are lost, licensed foster parents, often offering respite and police protective custody to children in need. I grew up in the DeSoto School District. My parents built a home in Woodland Park in Western Shawnee. I graduated from DeSoto High School in 1996. I'm a partner and the director of entertainment at a local architecture design firm. My wife and I moved back to the area and built our home in 2017 so our children could attend this district. I'm a proud DeSoto graduate. I know firsthand the value of being educated in one of the best school districts in Kansas. Three of my daughters currently attend Myers Elementary. My youngest will be enrolled in two years, so I will have all four of my daughters at Myers in 2025. My family will be in this district for the next 15 years. So I'm fully invested in the success of USD 232 and appreciate and love the principles it embodies. I believe school is for everyone and the mission is to ensure that they get the highest quality education. Well, thank you for that. And why don't we dig right into our questions? Um, sure. I'll start with a broad one. As a school board candidate, what are your top three policy issues? So first, I believe USD 232 is hands down the best school district in Kansas. So here are my three policy issues. One, let's focus on students. The DeSoto School District has a proud tradition of academic excellence founded on a student first mentality that should continue. We need to continue maintaining right-sized classes for optimal learning. Two, let's support our teachers. Promote student success by providing our teachers with the resources they need to ensure every child has the chance to succeed. And then third, we need to manage our growth. USD 232 is growing rapidly, so we should guide responsible and effective use of taxpayer dollars by managing that growth well. We need to make sure we prioritize funding in the classroom. And Chad, you mentioned funding, and that's a great segue to our next question. Uh, what are your thoughts on K through 12 education funding right now? So K through 12 funding is the most important investment in our future. You know, I do think it's positive that the state of Kansas has continued to fully fund public schools for the fifth year in a row. However, special education funding is challenging. It's currently underfunded by the state. I feel that USD 232 is known for its excellence and it has taken the responsibility to educate our students with special needs to ensure they get the equal opportunity to access education. Every student deserves quality education, including additional help and resources for those in need. I'm particularly excited for the recent addition to MISE that accommodates a special education center-based program. MISE is home to one of three elementary schools that provides these focused services. You know, the other side of the coin of funding is, is accountability and student performance. So in the K through 12 education system, it certainly requires accountability measures for student performance, and that's focused on post-secondary success and career readiness. Do you believe the district is meeting expectations for student achievement? So USD 232 continues to score above the state and national averages on the ACT college ready exam. DeSoto students have traditionally performed very well in these assessments. And the graduation rate suggests that we are on track. Our district boasts a graduation rate of 97.3%, which is great. What I think is positive is the district approach to assisting students by expanding the AP and college readiness courses, and they even allowed pre-AP classes for middle schoolers. So for me, it's really about providing opportunities for students. So I'm going to steal a line from our superintendent, Dr. Gibson, that I agree with. It's about making sure our students are fully prepared for the next phase of life. Well, and again, that's a great segue to my next question. Uh, we know Kansas is experiencing low unemployment rates and employers are struggling to find qualified workers. 
How do you see the school district helping to meet the business community's future workforce needs? You know, is that through work-based learning, like internships, training, and other career exploration opportunities? So I think we need to develop strong partnerships with local companies. You know, schools can create authentic career-connected learning opportunities and work experience for students by allowing them to explore a variety of industries through mentoring, job shadowing, apprenticeships, internships, guest speakers, and even the trades. And uh, changing topics rather uh, abruptly here, what are your thoughts on the efforts in the state legislature to expand school choice? So I'm going to I approach challenges with positive thinking, you know, looking for solutions and benefits. There is no doubt open enrollment will create a challenge for our administration, staff, and classrooms. I've personally spoken with several teachers in our district, and there are concerns over classroom sizes. Maintaining a correct student to teacher ratio is crucial, in my opinion, for student success and also teacher well being. The new policy allows the district to set the number of students we can accommodate. So we need to evaluate the limits of what the district can handle responsibly, and we need to set policy that is fair and adaptable to change with the impact of the district. And what do you think is the greatest challenge facing USD 232 right now? So for me, that's teacher retention and quality. You know, the field of qualified educators is declining. Teacher quality is the number one factor impacting student achievement. And we have highly skilled educators in our district. And the administration must wholeheartedly support staff so they can succeed. Retention of staff creates great culture. Support in good environments is where excellence occurs. And, and you know, this next question, uh, I think one thing everybody's talking about in DeSoto is Panasonic. And with that announcement uh, and the increase in revenue that it's likely to bring to the district, where do you think those revenues should should go? Um, you know, should it be used to reduce school bonds, increase wages for employees, increase training for students, et cetera? So I agree with these examples that you've given, right? You know, limit school bonds to reduce the costs on taxpayers, increase wages for teachers is an excellent allocation of revenue. You know, advocating for trades and allow students to quickly enter the workforce to earn money and build experience is beneficial to both the community and the individual. Panasonic Energy did donate $25,000 to the district. They've sponsored several events like the USD 232 Breakfast of Exploration. You know, I would hope Panasonic to continue their support of the school district through direct donations, grants, matching gift programs. There really is a great opportunity to partner with Panasonic. We can do this to benefit our students through increased knowledge and technology, manufacturing, and real world learning. Well, and Chad, my last question for you, what makes you uniquely qualified to serve on the school board and what most distinguishes you from your opponents in the race? So I'm a small business owner and I understand the importance of leadership and communication. Being an entrepreneur, I continuously listening and learning. My work resume has provided me with numerous skills that are going to benefit the board, such as strategic thinking, collaboration, problem solving. So my background as an architect will bring a unique skill set to the board that includes capital expenditures, future growth and planning, energy management, building safety, and overall construction cost accountability for our district. You know, as an alum and a parent of multiple students in the district, I am wholeheartedly 100% invested in the success of our public schools. Well, Chad, I appreciate you taking a little time to answer the questions. I want to give you a few moments to offer any final thoughts you'd like to offer. Of course. So it's been extremely rewarding to network with the community in our district. I've met with the former superintendent, the current superintendent, board members, directors, teachers, and I've knocked on over 2,000 doors meeting our community, hear their views and desires for our school. I'm extremely excited for the future of our district. I look forward to the support of all the stakeholders. Together, we can continue to make a positive impact on our kids. I appreciate your time. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Well, Chad, I want to wish you the best with your campaign. And let me remind people watching this video, there's a wealth of voter education and, uh, information 
at our Public Policy Council website, which is www.votejoco.com. Thank you.